Uh, hello guys, uh, this is Dylan McCarthy and Death Metal Fanatic 1998 here, and and I just want to let you guys know that uh, <sighs> that uh, the this is going to be the episode 28 of my metal album review series. Uh, yeah, you could say that you could say that it is almost over, but it literally is almost over. Uh, uh, because we're almost on our way to 30, uh, 30 episodes of this season. So, anyways, today's album review, metal album review that we're going to is... White Zombies Make Them Die Slowly. Uh, yeah, it, 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 so anyways, I've heard of this album uh, since the, yeah, back in 2012. So when I was 14 years old, yeah, back in October or was it uh, September? Uh, I can't even remember what month, but I know the year, but I can't remember the day either in 2012. So, anyways, yeah, "Make Them Die Slowly" has only seven tracks, and this album was recorded in November 1988. And it was released in March 22nd, 1989, and it was recorded in Platinum Island in New York City. You know, genre is heavy metal, and length is 39, 39 minutes and 56 seconds. Damn, that's more like, uh, that's almost uh, 40 minutes in total. It was released by Caroline Records and the producers Bill Laswell. So it is the second studio album by White Zombie, uh, and this and this album was named after the 1981 cannibal movie called Cannibal Ferrex, which is originally released in the U.S. as Make Them Die Slowly. There is a printing error on the CD's CD side saying "Let Them Die Slowly" instead of the album's correct title. Produced by Bill Laswell and featuring Ron Ricky on guitar. The album re rep represented in the uh, transition of the noise rock influence and sound of White Zombie's previous albums to heavy metal, which informed where much of the New York. So, yeah, it, it could sound like the punk and thrash metal or some shit. So, anyways, let's get on to the track list of what I shall read. There's only seven track lists in total, but long ones. So, here we had Demon Speed, Disaster Blaster, Murder World, Revenge, Acid Flesh, Power Hungry, and God Slayer. Well, I gotta say about, uh, about this album. So, you guys think it's gonna be a short album, but you guys are wrong. Because it's only 39 minutes, but it's almost 40 minutes in total. So... Anyways, the Demon Speed well, was really good. Disaster Blaster was was awesome, and the Murder World it kicked ass. And the Revenge, it was good. Acid Flush really hit the spot. So was the Power Hungry and God Slayer. So the shortest song of this album is Revenge, and and God Slayer is the longest. It's the longest song on this album. So here we have, so Rob Zombie plays the vocals and, and he does illustrations. John Ricky plays the guitar. Ivan the Prum uses the drums and Sean Yusult plays the bass guitar. So I gotta say, the recording, all right. Yeah, White Zombie entered the studio in early 1988, 1988 to record the follow-ups to Soul Crusher, intending to release their next album by June. Since their previous release, the band had started embracing more heavy metal influenced sound, which they wanted to capture in recording the, their new album. The, they recorded 16 songs over the course of tour, course of four days, but decided against releasing any of the finished material due to the similarity with their previous output. Tom Gway, the guitar player, left the band during this time and was replaced by John Rickey. 
The new lined up switched to, to a larger recording venue and attempted to record, re-record the material but ran out of the funds necessary to complete the album. Iggy Pop, yeah, the band member of uh, the Stooges, who was an admirer of their last album, recommended that the band finished recording with the producer and composer Bill Laswell. Bill Laswell opted to record the album from scratch at Platinum Island Studio in New York City. The final guitar overdubs, vocals, and mixing were done with Martin Bissey and his studio in Gowanus, Brooklyn, New York. The band was critical of Laswell's Bill Laswell's production, which Sean saying, which Sean saying, it sounds like a t like a ten can to me with a muzzle non-existent bass. In a 2010 interview, she recalled her experience recording the album. Some of the songs cut from the release are "Dead Ringer," "Freak War," "Punishment Park," "Scum and Kill 2," and "Star Slammer." John Ricky, the guitar player, excited the band the day the record was completed, having been diagnosed with carpal tunnel syndrome. <laughs> Damn. So I gotta say about this album. I gotta say it was a good, uh, it was a good spooky vocals. Actually, a good heavy metal vocals. It was a good guitar playing. And I, I just want to let you guys know, also, the drums were really, were really badass. Really echoing. You hear that? Yeah, I'm trying to imitate the drum sound with my sandal. Uh, uh, oh, shit. Well, what to say? Uh, yeah. The album, this place changed from the punk influenced noise rock of earlier albums to a sound more remiscuring the thrash metal. Fuck. Rob Zombie has claimed a well into the noise scene by accident and that after a while we got fed up and didn't want to have anything to do with it. We tried to move away from the from it consciously. Although he had previously disliked the heavy metal scene, Rob Zombie's opinion changed after borrowing Metallica's Ride the Lightning from drummer Ivan the Prune. Sean has cited both Metallica and Slayer as being highly inf influential to, to the band during this time. In an interview with Cream Presents Thrash Metal, Sean does suggested that the new stuff is pretty close to being metal, while Rob Zombie claimed, I don't know if, if you could really call it metal. But there is a lot more focus to it. Their songs are more like songs. All right. Well, I'm gonna save this album, this artwork. Uh, this artwork looks really spooky, but it looks really good. So let's go to Discogs to check the whole thing. All right. Here's the front, and here's the back. Yeah, that's a that that's a man with the uh, two bones, which made an X on it. Yeah, it's really spooky. You guys know what it mean. Yeah, and so there's the CDR. Wait, what the fuck? What what kind of fucking version am I at? Ah, uh, I know it is, but it looks like a fucking CDR stuff. Let's go to the latest version. Uh, actually, never mind. Just fuck it. Well, I gotta say about this album, uh, I'm gonna give this album uh, a nine, uh, a nine out of ten. It was really good, a really good album. I like it, even though with this the song, these track lists are less than ten. So, <coughs> anyways, I'm gonna have to head out. So stay tuned for episode number twenty-nine, which is the semi-final episode of the Metal Album Review series. Yeah, on episode 29, we're going to review the Suicidal Tendencies album and join the army. Yeah, stay tuned for episode 29 for this. And meanwhile, you see you in the next video more to come. If you guys do not like White Zombie 
or any other materials made by White Zombie, I respect your opinion. Alright guys, see you guys later.